Hello viewers, my name is Chibizura Arthur from Amatole West in the Eastern Cape. Welcome to the Eastern Cape Department of Education broadcast studio. Today's lesson is about data handling. I'll be covering three subtopics back to back for your full understanding. The first topic is data collection using the questions. In the beginning, we need to define the term data itself. The word data means information, and this information, it has to be collected. It is in numerical figures, and it is actually used in a research. Now, this topic of data handling has got a process or a cycle which we follow, and this cycle it starts with developing questions. We followed by collecting data, then we have got classifying of data and organizing data. Then the next one will be summarizing data. Then after that, you interpret and analyze the data. Then after that, you have to represent the data in different formats. That is the cycle that we have to follow as far as the topic of data handling is concerned. However, it is important to understand that there's a lot of uh, vocabulary and terms that we use in this topic. Let me start with the word biased question. If we look at a question, then we say it's a biased question. What do we mean by that? Biased question is the question containing factors that may influence the respondent to answer in a way that is not entirely true. And the opposite of biased question is unbiased. And if a question is not biased or is unbiased, we can call it an ambiguous question, which means a research needs to be done in order to prove that. We can call that a hypothesis where we can have to come up with a proper statement after a research or investigation has been made. We have categorical data which is um, data that is actually put in different groups. We call that categorical data. And the opposite of that is going to be numerical data, which is uh, the data that is uh, in numbers. Now, we also have got different types of graphs, which we call the bar graphs, broken line graphs, box and whiskers. We have got compound bar graphs. All these, a mathematical literacy learner, a grade 12 learner must be able to define fully in order to be fit for the examination. Here is a recap of the first topic, um, the one that we were dealing with, where we looked at the different types of terminology, vocabulary that is used in our mathematical literacy data handling topic, whereby we have learned that we have got different types of uh, terms like questionnaires, different types of graphs like the um, scatter plots. We also talked about the box and whiskers, whereby we have got different types of data, categorical, numerical, continuous data. So there's quite a number of vocabulary that you have learned today, which you are going to master, read them properly, know the definitions, and go make sure that you also use your own words to define this word, th these terms. However, we will now fast track to the next subtopic where we are going to deal with developing questions. Looking at the first activity that I'm just put on here, we have got the following question that was used in a survey. And remember the word survey from your terminology, which actually, which is mainly a data collection method, which we are still going to look into as we proceed with the topic. Let me read this question. Is the number of human immunodeficiency virus, which is HIV, positive cases in Eastern Cape, the highest in South Africa for the period 2023 to 2024? This is a question which is posed by someone or which is asked by someone. And remember, we have said for you to be able to collect data, you need to understand the question. There must be a question. There must be a problem. Then we are going to dig deep in order to find out 
to investigate, to research, to find out about the particular question so that we can answer, so that we can change the question from being biased, from being a ambiguous to a question which we can actually give a response. But this can only happen through data collection. If I can get back to some of the kind of questions that you'll be asked in your final paper, for example, is this a biased, unbiased, or ambiguous question, substantiated? There are three words there. There are three words in this case where we have got one, biased, two, unbiased, and three, we have ambiguous. These words, we have discussed about them in our terminology, whereby we do understand now what is the meaning of that. Then the question went on to say substantiate. When we say substantiate in our mathematical literacy, we mean you need to give us a proper reason. Why do you say so? You need to validate your statement. Why do you have to say this question is ambiguous? This question is biased or this question is unbiased. Now, as far as this uh, activity is concerned, I would like you to go further and read again as far as these definitions and terminology are concerned so that you can be able to answer this question. Now, looking at the, these two other very important definitions, they say define the term population and a sample. Now, I would like to go and give an example as far as these two words are concerned or in trying to expatiate these two words, which is population and, and sample. Example number one, you visit, an ex you visit a hospital, you are not feeling so well, and then the doctor says, we are going to, we need some blood from your system. Now, if I ask you, are they gonna collect all the blood from your system? Are they gonna collect part of your blood from the system? Now we know that they just collect a bottle or small bottles of what? Some 10 millimeters, some five millimeters, 15 milliliters of blood from your stream. Now, looking at the two words, basically, we are going to say now the whole blood in your system, the whole blood in your system can be regarded as population. Then the symbol, it's now that blood that has been collected from your system. Now we're gonna call it a sample. And out of that sample, what do they do with the sample? They actually go and test. They're gonna go and test on that sample. And after that, they can read the whole system of your body. What is actually happening in your bloodstream, sicknesses and diseases, whatever that is affecting you. This is basically the definition between population and, and sample. So we're gonna have to use that in our research as we proceed. In a nutshell, or we can safely say after we have developed a question, now we get on to organize the data itself. How is the data organized? We get to, to, to actually organize the data. The first point is organizing data is taking information and arranging it into some kind of um, order, such as ascending or descending. The two words, again, they are very common and they need to be mastered, ascending and descending. The term ascending, it means arranging the data from the smallest to the biggest. And the opposite will be true for descending, meaning descending will be arranging from the biggest to the smallest. So it is your responsibility as a matriculant to understand these two words, to master them, to be able to define them as well, so that you can be able to answer questions when asked. Next, 
classifying data means organizing it in groups or classes based on some common features. So as far as this is concerned, remember we are moving in a cycle in this case. The first cycle is you develop a question, you organize the data. We have got a survey in this context where 20 learners were asked the number of hours they spend in a week. Their responses were recorded to the nearest hour. So these are 20 learners here. If you look at these, this is actually a 20 learners put in this table here, whereby the first learner spent three hours, the second learner eight hours and so forth, up to the 20th learner who spent seven hours uh, studying in a week. Now, we are asking some kind of questions as far as that is concerned. Question A, we have got arrange the responses in ascending order. We just talked about ascending order, whereby, what does ascending order mean? It means you're gonna arrange the data from the smallest to the biggest. Now, looking at the data, we have got the smallest data there. And what is the smallest data, if I can look at that? We have got three hours. We still have got another three hours. So we are arranging them in ascending order. From three hours, we have got four hours. And next, we're gonna have, um, um, the next one, we have got four hours there, we've got five hours. Then if we look at the biggest or the bigger data that we have, it's actually 12. So the smallest will be three and the biggest will be 12. So you just need to arrange that in that manner. Then the next one now is gonna be, is this data, is this data classified as categorical or numerical? Explain meaning to say that I have underlined those three words because that is where the focus of your top of your question is. Number one, categorical. Now you are actually referring from that terminology of yours that you have, and you must have it in your book, and you must know them by fingertips by the time you'll be sitting for your final examination. So categorical, remember, we said it is the data in different, in different groups or grouped data, grouped data. Then numerical now, we are looking at the data that is actually in what? In numbers, the data in, in numbers. That's numerical for you. Now, you are being asked what type of data is that? And is, as we can see that all these are actually in numbers. So it can be classified as numerical data. Then on number C there, we are going to look at, now we have got a group the frequency table. We call this a frequency table. It is necessary for you to understand that this table is called frequency table. Now, what is this? The first column here, we have got grouped data. The second one is the tally system. Then after that, the frequency. Frequency, we mean how many times is that tally or that group repeated or that number repeated? Now we are looking at the tally, tally table there whereby we have got a grouped frequency table which we are going to work with using the data given or the data set that we have whereby it's the number of hours spent uh, by 20 learners in a week. Now, how do we tabulate this table here? I want us to quickly go to, let me collect my pen there then the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the grouped data whereby we have got one to five hours. On one to five hours, we are going to look at the data that we have and pick up all those that are between one hour and five hours. So for example, we're going to start by taking the three, which is three hours, and we're gonna put a line like this. Then we go on to take the next one, which is four hours, we put another line there. We also have um, another three hours. We put a line there. We have got five hours there. We put another line there. Then if we continue on this lower row, we also have another four hours there, meaning to say that that will be the fifth. Now, a tally, remember, you are going to put that line across there, which means we have got five of them. 
and this five you are going to count them one two three four five and you're going to put number five there on our frequency meaning to say that you are going to do the next on the six to ten hours you do the next on 11 to 15 hours then after that all this must actually add up to 20 it must actually add up to what to 20 because that will be the total so if you add the five plus what you're going to get there plus what you're going to get there this should give us 20 learners because that is the data that we are dealing with and this is what we call the group d grouped frequency table in a nutshell i would like to summarize the key points in our lesson the first thing we talked about is the definition of data and we said it's information and this information needs to be collected it needs to be gathered and why are we collecting this information to respond to answer to a certain hypothesis or a statement that needs to be responded to because it is actually unanswered then from there we went on to develop or show our, ourselves how to develop this question and after we have developed the question now we go and collect the data we collect the data we actually organize the data and in organizing the data we use some tables called frequency tables they might not be grouped frequency tables but it can also be grouped frequency table whereby you organize the data into manageable pieces then after that now you can work with that data to try and summarize it and make sense of it to totalize the whole topic of data handling this is the end of our session today but we are still going to continue with our next our next uh, concept which is now the collection part and also the analyzing of the data and also the representation of the data stay tuned um, grade 12s we have got more to learn as far as data handling is concerned it is my great pleasure uh, to understand that we are listening please don't forget to leave your questions on the comment sections and don't forget to put your to put your name and your name of your school so that we can give shout outs please share recommend and subscribe to our youtube channel thank you for watching see you on our next lesson